Hi, and welcome to Death in Cambodia, Life in America, a podcast where I interview my father, Robert Chow, one of the first survivors of the 1970s Cambodian genocide. He survived the killing fields, navigated through the jungles of Thailand, and escaped to America to build an empire in the donut industry. After about 40 years, I think it's about time he got a chance to share his story. I'm Dorothy, his daughter, and your host for today's episode. Let's dive in. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Death in Cambodia, Life in America. Last episode, we left off with Robert feeling like he really only had three options at this point, Um, considering now that everybody understands the war is here, something is happening, something is changing. Um, He realized there was really only three options he had either go back to find his parents and his parents' village, either join the Vietnamese army, or escape to the Thailand border. So, Ba, welcome back. Hey, good morning, everybody. You know, what was cool, I remember last episode that was really, really kind of stuck out to me. I remember you saying that everybody was so exhausted and so tired and so overworked, but when people start hearing about the changes happening, things are going to be different soon. People started getting more energy in the camp. Yeah, you can tell by looking the eye, it's just like, and the face, the expression, uh, you can tell, you know, everybody have hope because we've been waiting for this moment for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what way that the country change, but we know it will be better than what we have right now. So everybody just look at each other, no word, you know, s- sometimes we face down and smile because we don't want the soldier to know that you smile and then you love you. You die. That day, uh, I believe it's at night, uh, get off from work and had dinner. And like you mentioned earlier, I was planning uh, in my mind, either I'm going to go to my parents' village, which is need to walk about three, three and a half hours. Or if the Vietnamese soldier come in, I'm going to go ahead and join them. And the third option, probably going to head west toward Thai's border. Uh, that's a long walk. I had to talking about maybe days, four or five days at least. And at this point, I mean, do you feel like... Mama was still alive in that village. I mean, uh, what 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 was your number one option at this point? The number one option, I believe, I'm gonna go ahead and join the army. If the army is coming, I'll join it right away. That's the only way. Uh, 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 that's my decision because that only way that's safe. Because. They have the, weapons. They will have weapons, and plus, I think they're pretty strong. Otherwise, they're not going to, you know, come to uh, this far. Because, you know, from Vietnam to the town that I live, that's close to Thai's border. That's almost a whole Cambodian. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to think, you know, if they come, I mean, to reach us at this village, it's almost over. I mean, mm-hmm. they almost uh, invasion the whole Cambodian. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, mom, uh, my parent probably left too because, you know, uh, that's a big risk, you know. You just spend like three and a half hour walk uh, to the village and 
what happened if you couldn't find them? Or even on the way, you said at this point, all the Khmer Rouge soldiers really panic. Really panic. Yes. And, and they're, they're easy to kill oh. anybody at this point. When you mentioned that, I think now reminding me, I think the next camp, they kill almost all because uh, whatever the bullet they have, they shoot, you know, they, sh- they kill, they panic. They, 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 they just shoot until they run out of bullet, which is. And, we realize now actually they don't have much bullet. Really, it's just so surprised. And then now they, we 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 realize a lot that Khmer Rouge not really organize the 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 soldier at all. They're not as strong as you guys maybe thought they were. Yeah, no, they not. They have no connect. They 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 just. I, I don't know. It's just, it's no bullet. They, they use all the bullets and whatever they have, they kill that cam. I mean, you know, but which is not a whole lot of bullet. They only each rifle, they only carry maybe two cliff of a bullet. That's it. So 10 people, I mean, you know, if they sh- everybody's shooting, it's, well, I, I think it's killed quite a, quite a few. I mean, uh, as it's no surprise. Um, you know, I have a, I have a question actually that I was reading into Cambodian history just last night. There's a lot of there's a lot of talk about the the most dangerous camp called Tul Slang. Tul Slang. That's uh, close to Phnom Penh. Close to Phnom Penh. Yeah, that's the. Uh, uh, it's still. Uh, because that place is just like a killing place. They want to torture you, killing you, or they just go ahead and take the people in there and then and then uh, and then kill you, label you to death. Uh, because that's time it killed the most people. You're talking about maybe million. Mm-hmm. So. Yes, called dual slang, uh, which is way far away from where my camp is, because mm-hmm. this is close to the uh, capital. Yeah. Okay. I know this is a little bit off topic, but yes. only because only because I I realized that you know I I figured did you I mean if you knew anybody in there or if you were part of that or whatever it was there was a lot of history. And a lot of articles talking about that camp specifically. Right. Uh, up until now, uh, because that camp, it's it's a murder camp. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, uh, uh, because of the close close to the capital, close to the capital, and I believe it was also a high school. Yeah, that they converted. But converted. I believe it's a high school or university school converted to a uh, 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 killing uh, field. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, it tortured you, and yeah. that. So it, it, my camp, it's a little bit far, far away from uh, from that. Well, anyways, we're going going back to to where we are. Um, what did what did you guys what did you guys decide to do? So, what, did, what was everybody uh, doing actually? Well, I think everybody. I mean, the next day, I mean, you know, we uh, uh, know the war was, was broke up. I mean, you know, the Vietnamese invasion Cambodian and. Uh, all the uh, soldier that got our camp, that uh, twelve uh, soldier was disappeared. You know, didn't you know? Uh, we didn't hear the whistle. Uh, usually, the whistle, and then in the morning, and then we go to work. So now, uh, you know, by sunrise around seven o'clock, everybody just look at each other and kind. Happy, panic, uh, mixed emotional, you know, uh, uh, what's going, well, what happened now? Now we're talking, now we start talking. I said, hey, what we, we should do now? Uh, so uh, there's nobody. And now by 10 o'clock, people they just disappear. I mean, you know, some of them just go back home. I don't know what direction they go. So... Um, was looking for the uh, the Vietnamese soldier. There's no soldier, and no no gunshot, no nothing, and just like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. 
And uh, I didn't know much about the uh, war that much. We hear, we hear the gun, we hear uh, you know, the bomb and all of that. But now here, just so quiet, so peaceful, and everybody just like panic and run all over the place. Uh, that morning, by 10 o'clock, everybody was gone. Disappear just a moment, just go home. So I, I don't know what direction it goes. So I decide cross out the uh, the Vietnamese soldier because it's no it's no it's no just soldier around here. So I cross out the uh, go to my parents' village. So I just try to walk toward west Thailand's border. So I left the camp. I believe one or two of the uh, Kamaru soldier that got a Caesar. She's about 26, 27 years old. And I believe she changed her clothes and threw the gun away. And she walked. She not, you know, everybody saw her and walked, probably go back to her, her yes. village. So I think a lot of Kamaru soldiers that a little bit older, a, have a little bit understanding. They change their clothes, throw away the gun, and then go back where will they, you know, live. Uh, probably ten percent, ten to fifteen percent, I guess. Uh, I just know two lady that did that because we saw them change, you know, the black uniform and the hat to. Uh, uh, regular clothes, and then uh, I think she was lucky because most people, most people, if you if they see you, they they know you, they will attack you because they just try to take revenge. You know, you know, if even you change your clothes, you're talking about the people would have wanted to take revenge on her for on all her, the hurt yeah, she's yeah. done to other people, right? Yeah. That must have also made you feel like, oh my gosh, this is really ending. Yeah. Oh, everybody happy that day. Every, everyone smiling, happy. Yeah. But uh, I think a lot of people got killed too that last, the last few days, you know, because they just crazy. It was, it was chaos. Mm -hmm. So everybody packed. Uh, I left the camp that late morning and walk toward Pai's border, which is a, well, across called uh, the city uh, called Sisapon. So Sisapon, it's next to Mugobre. It's on the way to uh, uh, the city next to Thailand. It's called Ojrao. Ojo, that means the deep canal. That's where the border is. So I walk all day to get to Sisapon. Now I saw a lot of people like walk on the uh, main uh, highway toward Ojo, which is Thai's border. I said, oh, wow, you see the all kinds of people, thousands of thousands just walk and just like now reminding me, I said, wow, this is, was the same that was happened four and a half year, four years ago when the Peru, you know, took over the city and then they just push you to the countryside. Exactly the same. But it just, you have more freedom. You can walk, you can sleep, you can talk, and all of that, you know, and everybody happy and worry because they're not 100% sure. Did you recognize anybody? Yes. And then I walk, I walk, then I see Tom. Mm. I see Tom. 
Tom family Tom's by uh, he was by himself too uh, so you know walked forward to Thailand and for all the listeners who is Tom Tom is uh, his brothers my dad's best friend he older than me about five years so he at that time he was 21 22. Because uh, at that time, I'm probably 16, 16 and now 17, somewhere around there. Yeah, I believe it's, I'm 16, close to 17 years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I said, oh, wow. Uh, where are you going? I said, well, you know, everybody went across to Thailand. So he was joining me. So we have two people to walk together and toward to you know, that direction. At this point also, too, were you thinking about how you, were you thinking about the rest of the family and how maybe if they were going to be alive? Uh, yeah, I thinking about them and then, but uh, it just, it just no way that you, uh, can figure that you out. worry too much because now you just worry how you're going to cross to Thailand mm-hmm. because you're still in a dangerous zone mm-hmm. because Khmer Rouge is not really completely out. Yes, they move back to forest, to Thai border, to Thai. That's where they start all along Thai and Cambodian border. It's the uh, thick forest. That's where they start the uh, war and they have their own camp, mm-hmm. their own training camp it's along Thai border. Right. So we know that all of these soldiers is go back to training camp. Yeah. And we, I didn't have food because I have no money. Well, you know, there was no food. But I think you... You ate all the sugar that you had. Oh, that's, the medication yeah, that's, from that's, a long time yeah, ago already. Yeah, yeah. That's a couple of months, uh, you know, before. Yeah. So, okay. And... Uh, uh, well, no food, but now even that people, you know, try to really help each other. You know, I remember I'm so hungry and walk, and then I see uh, the people that from the village, they still, when they, when they move out, walk toward that direction, uh, they carry, they bring all the food they can. They have food, they have rice, they have all kinds of food. How kinds of fruit too, which the, uh, it was at night. This is before I met Tom, you know, uh, I mm-hmm. think go back a little bit. Uh, I walked before I met Tom. I got to uh, that city, small city along the uh you know, along the road, and then I was so hungry, and and then this family they cook, uh, you know, rice. Oh, I I was uh, look at it, and so, and my 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 jaw is, you know, it's just like, oh my god, if I can just have a one or two bite, uh I stand there, uh, 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 it was so many people, so I stand there and I, I talk to them, I say, oh, you know, uh, you, where are you coming from, what village, because I'm trying to serve my parents too, so uh, they say, oh, they're from, uh, not too far from Sisapun, which is, you know, and I told him I'm looking for my parent. I told him, I said, I left the camp from uh, camp number three, close to the uh, camp number five. Now, camp number five was very, very horrible. It's worse than camp number three. So he know where I'm from. So he asking me, uh, you're by yourself? I said, yeah. And he said, oh, you, you can... Go with us. I mean, we plan to go to Thailand too. So, and then he asked, You eat yet? I said, No, I have no food because I left the camp uh, this morning. Uh, I have no food all day. Uh, so he know that the people that from the camp, they have nothing. I mean, uh, not 
it's different from the people that from village. So he was able to get food because when you say village, you're talking about people who kind of like where Mama was right, left, exactly. right? Exactly. The village where they actually had like a kitchen, right. cafeteria, exactly. Where they, you know, yes. worked worked on the field, but they had at least maybe a little bit more structure. Because he told me, because I asked how you get the food, he right. said, you know, when the soldier left, everybody just run to the uh, cafeteria. place, the, the cafeteria and all, they, they stole all kinds of rice, all kinds of food and all of that. So, and then plus, I think they saved their own food too. In the village, you have more option to find food. You know, you grow food, you, you, you're not gonna, sometimes you just keep some, you take risks and I mean, right. so, uh, not uh, like, not like a, the, us in the camp, right. In the middle of yeah. the jungle or yeah. wherever you are. Right. right. So, uh, yeah, he offered me and I mean, uh, oh, it was good. <sighs> Thanks, you know, this guy a lot that he, uh, he know, I mean, we all the same boat and he understand the uh, young live in a camp. It's just not how much option. That was the first bowl of rice you probably had in a no, long time. No, I think, you know, we, we had, you know, later, I think they feed us, you know, a little bit more mm. because they just want us to have more energy. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, probably. Maybe I said five, six times a year, you know, they feed you <laughs> rice. So uh, the most of them is just the rice soup. Yeah, most of them is just the water. And then I was spent one night with this family. Uh, they have two kids, young, young kid. Uh, I said probably, you know, three, four years old, you know, very they were, little. They yeah. were probably born during the Khmerouche. Yeah, Khmerouche, yes, yes. Yeah, they are. They they were. So I was feel not lonely. You didn't feel you you felt like a lo- little bit less lonely. Yes. That one night. Yeah, because hope that's the main thing. You were dreaming that you cross Thailand, you you know, and then I'm start planning. I said, oh, uh, I gonna find a job and gonna make money and buy food and you dream it was dreaming about the instant noodle you know all of that you know stuff that you haven't had for a long time and at that point were you thinking of staying in thailand if you were to get there oh yeah well you know uh you 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 have no options you didn't know much right what beside thailand Right. You never know that United States that, you know, taking uh, refugee and we didn't have no idea. idea, no idea. The only thing that we know, we cross Thailand, we can work as a slave or somebody, whatever, it doesn't matter. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here and <laughs> get, at least we have food. Yeah. That, that's the main thing, food. So we start walking to... Before you got to Ojero, they have one more city between there called Nimit. Mm. Nimit and Ojero, it's very close. It's about maybe 10 kilometers between called Nimit and Ojero. Mm-hmm. Ojero is the Thai border. Right. Nimit. Uh, so we walked for. A day, a day and a half, we got to Nimit. Nimit, then nobody, it just, everybody just stuck there. I said, oh, what's going on? Thousands of thousand people just live along the, the road and and then uh, 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 no food. And they just stuck there. The reason why Vietnamese soldier stop us, because the Khmer it just in front of the, mm. in, in front of the uh, in front of them. So a lot of a lot of soldier Vietnamese soldier in the mid warning you to warning not you go any further. Don't go any further. They not try to stop you to cross to Thailand, but it's 
dangerous because they fighting, they fighting every day, every every night. The so Vietnamese uh, with the Khmer Rouge, the Khmer Rouge are fighting. Yes,、uh, in Namet, 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 that city. 